a very good afternoon to all the participants as co convener i take immense pleasure in welcoming you all for the fourth day of our five days online workshop on research scope in additive manufacturing i take privilege in the given giving a short intro about our today's valuable session speaker dr sagar m polikart dr sagar m polikart associate professor and head coe additive manufacturing at cmrit acquired doctoral degree on the development of a novel 3d printing technology called selective inhibition centering where it investigated the impact of operating parameters on polymer component properties developed products including a self watering system for micro farming and 3d printed teaching aids for visually impaired students for the project automated flush water conserving closet for male urinal a patent has been filed and published in addition he also collaborated with gkvk bengaluru on the development of the an iot based uv assisted sugar cane node cutter besides the above two entrepreneurs established their companies in bengaluru under his guidance ansu 3d tech private limited and infinite 3d tech published 20 scientific papers in international peer reviewed publication in the area of additive manufacturing which can be found above currently working with general electric on the manufacture of novel synthetic high thermoplastic polymers for robotic applications presently working on the development of novel 3d printable medical implants in collaboration with bioroot exploration india private limited and shri chitra tirunal institute of medical science tiruvananthapuram i thank to management principal hod and convener to giving this opportunity for me thank you sir <coughs> okay thank you sir uh, thanks for your uh, introduction so i hope my voice is audible so is my voice is audible sir okay. yes sir audible sir okay 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 so i'm going to share my ppt so i hope my screen is visible to everyone yes sir visible sir okay fine sir so why i selected this technology and its uh, application so uh, we we know we are a many, uh, mechanical engineers we know uh, how the conventionally we are going to manufacture the components since from sec uh, long years we are working on the manufacturing activity but so how does every uh, decades a drastic change in the manufacturing at uh, manufacturing field is taking place now we are talking about industry 4 dot so in industry 4 dot everyone they wanted uh, the things to be happen very faster right so in that additive manufacturing also falling in that category so earlier days we used to get up so uh, we used to uh, get up so much of hurdle to uh, develop any of the products if it is concept level and it is a poc level right prototype level so uh, they will be taking more, uh, more they will be consuming more time uh, to convert that concept into a real product so now the additive manufacturing made that path very easy irrespective of any material irrespective of any material but one thing i want to tell you that additive manufacturing this is not a recent technology this is also very old technology in 1980 in 1980 this technology exhausted evolved but we came to know that during because it was licensed so 2000 uh, in the year 2000 so that license that got over then uh, it came into market so everyone they started using this nowadays so all many uh, big companies they are looking for, towards this kind of technology so we have a different applications of this additive manufacturing because we are dealing with a different manufacturing activity but here i have selected basically medical field 
how this edu manufacturing is going to link with the medical field what kind of components or products we are going to manufacture in what level and in what category that's what i mentioned endless opportunity not only one field this technology is apl applicable for all the field but in that i selected medical field why i selected medical field, uh, field because uh, nowadays there are so many accidents are happening so many accidents are happening many patients they have their injuries even a sports person also they are having so much of injuries and even old people they are also having so much of uh, uh, difficulties in their legs okay in their body so by keeping this in a mind the conventional manufacturing system it is not coping with this problems or issues so now they started adopting or opting this edu manufacturing technology to solve such kind of issues so now throughout this section so i will be showing you what all the different types of uh, material being used for this edu manufacturing and what kind of implants and how that implant they are going to manufacture so this all we will go through this and whatever i am showing you these are all the research opportunities because suppose if you are interested to do any research if you want to take up uh, any problem uh, you can it is sir, sir excuse me sir yes 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 ah sir sorry to interrupt sir your slides yeah. are not changing sir no no i didn't change i didn't change okay okay fine sir fine sir. thank you sir okay uh, that's what it is open to everyone uh, if you want to choose any of the uh, while well, uh, through throughout the pro, uh, throughout the presentation if you want if you feel it is a good project or it is a good point uh, to work upon that it is open to you people you can take it so before this uh, first we uh, need to know why this 3d printing technology is required right and uh, uh, why should we learn about 3d printing technology because we clubbed with many uh, conventional manufacturing system even the advanced i can say it is a robotic technology is also advanced and cnc nc all all are advanced right but how this 3d printing technology is competing with conventional method and why we need this technology and what would be the outcome of this technology and how we how we are expect uh, accepting this outcome of this 3d printing technology uh, many a word uh, many times uh, many authors or many researchers they were using uh, different types of words sometimes they do call as a 3d printing sometimes they do call as a rapid prototyping so now i am calling it as a additive manufacturing some people they will call it as a layer manufacturing all these words point toward the same technology right it is pointing towards the same technology it is pointing towards the same so before going for that we'll go back just history how this who's in uh, uh, developed this kind of technology and how uh, who's that person so this technology developed in the year 1980s that is a japanese engineer so i can say it is a hideo kodama okay initially he was doing 2d images we know printers which can print on a paper that is a 2d so he wanted to make 3d model that's what he called as a simple way 3d model so 3d image he started calling it as a 3d image then slowly he called it as a 3d printing right then the later in 1984 chuck hull so he is the one of the partner in 3d system corporation uh, corporation so he developed a first type of uh, printer that is stereo lithography stereo lithography where uh, they are going to use a resin material uh, which can treated by using uv light to make a 3d model that was the first a uh, very easy method to make a 3d model but that component will not be having such a uh, strength it will it will not compare uh, compete with any other uh, strong material just they wanted to they wanted to show we can print 3d model that's what they developed first 3d printer that is stereo lithography so during 1884 to 86 he is the uh, the person what you can see is the charles hull so he is a person is invented that and he coined uh, that term uh, for that printer as a stereo lithography 
and the second portion what you can see that is the first 3d printer built uh, by 3d system that is a, a company uh, during 1992 uh, and you know what is the first uh, component they developed ears this is the prototype model of ears right so they didn't develop any metal components they didn't develop any plastic components nothing just straight away they applied to the medical field see these are the ears and these are the finger structure these are the first prototype models that uh, they developed through 3d printing technology and slowly they started uh, working on a miniature to develop a miniature kind of human kidney uh, that is uh, developed through 3d printing also and in 2018 uh, 2006 uh, they came uh, they came with a, a, a new a way of uh, 3d printing that is by using laser right uh, we can play around the property of, uh, by using laser with uh, any material it may be a, a polymer material it may be a metal material it may be a ceramic material the laser it is best suitable for to work with all this material that's what during uh, after 2000 this 3d printing technology is completely evolved and it it started growing like a hot cake that's what all the companies are looking toward this kind of technology and they started developing this kind of aesthetics uh, so these are uh, prosthetic models for uh, injured or uh, uh, physically disabled persons that kind of person they started developing such kind even if i talk about gold they'll see that this is the first 3d printed gold product that is because they used only 14 karat gold right slowly they started applying this kind of technology to develop different kind of product so before going so what is this technology additive the word itself only it will define additive means joining layers so one simple example I can give you. I just uh, usually we people will go to the bakery and we'll buy a bread, right? So bakery, uh, so usually the bakery person he will give that bread into the slices, right? Uh, that bread it will be having number of slices of breads. So if all if you join all this together and that will give some structure, right? Suppose if you uh, separate that, uh, separate if you uh, segregate all the individual slices, obviously there will be no shape. When you stack each bread slices one over the other, so one one over the uh, other, so that will give the shape. Similar way, the 3D printing technology or additive manufacturing technology is going to work. So here also, components or products are going to develop or going to build uh, by joining layer upon layer, by fusing layers. So this one simple definition they have given right now there is no proper definition for this there is no proper uh, uh, words for this okay every year they are doing uh, they are doing the meeting and they they keep on changing the names for this technology so right now they are calling by the name additive manufacturing and if i compare this additive manufacturing how it is best suitable and from uh, available commercial so usually commercial way of manufacturing technology will be having in a subtractive way of manufacturing. Subtractive way means removing excess material to give shape to the component. So we'll be adopting CNC machines or the lathe. We people, we know how this uh, material is going to manufacture through subtractive, right? So these are raw material will involve different equipments or machines and that machine is going to remove excess material and that will give the shape to the component that excess material will go waste right sometimes we cannot say it is a waste but we cannot we we can go with the recycling okay with this waste again we can make a raw material then we'll go with the same procedure but if you go with the additive manufacturing technology so raw material that is going to process by using the equipment additive manufacturing equipment so here what will happen no extra material how much material is required to build the component only that much material it is going to consume and is going to build the 3d model okay so after building 3d model hardly 
hardly even 0.5 percent waste i can say it is a negligible uh, waste is going to produce this is how we can compare uh, subjective way of manufacturing as well as and additive way of manufacturing okay without taking your much time so straight away i will come to the point so what are the process or steps involved you take whatever technology in additive manufacturing additive man in additive manufacturing we have a different uh, machines that those machines based on raw material which is available in the market so sometimes if you want polymer material so plastic material we have some equipment uh, in additive manufacturing which can work for polymer material okay because each polymer material will be having their own properties for example melting temperature a single technology is not suitable for all the material based on the raw material they are going to develop the required type of machines so similarly ceramic material suppose if you want to develop any ceramic component some 3d printers uh, techniques are there so that will work with a uh, to print uh, they will print the uh, ceramic material and if i talk about metal because most of the automobile such as any uh, field it is clubbed with the metal components so many people they do have a doubt that whether this 3d printing technology can able to print 3d uh, metal components yes this got the capability to print metal even but still some research is happening but all the metals we cannot very few metals uh, material they can uh, we can print by using the 3d printing technology okay so in, you you take whatever uh, 3d printing technology available working principle will be remain same that's what i wanted to highlight what is the procedure a step by step procedure to work with this technology first case if you want to print uh, if you want to develop any of the component first you need CAD model that is 3D model. Then only you, whatever technology you want, if it is CNC or MC, initially we need a 2D or 3D model. But this technology needs only 3D model. 2D model, it will not work with the 2D model. Okay, we need a CAD that is 3D model. Once the 3D model is done, it's ready. That model we are supposed to save in the file format as stl i can say dot stl dot stl means standard triangulation language okay usually cad model we are going to save as a cad part right that is a file part for the 3d model but for 3d printing we need uh, say so major major 3d printers they need a file uh, of 3d model in the format that is dot stl standard tessellation language also we'll call it as okay see here in figure uh, figure one that is a 3d model how the surface it looks uh, super finish but after converting this 3d model now uh, say we convert into format that is stl see the triangulation uh, surface has formed triangular surface has formed right mm -hmm. so this is a file format is required once this file format is ready then we have to go for file transfer to the machine so we have the laptop or desktop we have the 3d modeling software then we have the 3d printer then we have to transfer this stl file format to the 3d printer so if you work with any machine that machine that involves some setup that machine requires some setup before going for to operate any machine that needs setup so here also machine setup is there so we are supposed to do machine setup because uh, suppose if you want to build your component very faster rate uh, without uh, with compromising your quality of your product right so there uh, i can uh, set my machine to build this component at a faster rate i will maintain higher feed rate but i'm going to compromise with the quality of the product right but that's what so such kind of parameters are required to set for the machine suppose if you want to build a high quality of products right high quality of products in that case i'm going to set my machine with a lower feed rate so that machine is going to print at lower speed so that my quality of product will be very good 
so depending upon the customer requirement or uh, the de uh, product developer requirement so they do play with this property of material and then once the machine uh, parameter is set then they will go for build so we have to click the button of build so automatically so uh, so after machine setup what they do uh, they will go for slicing what is the slicing this is very important it is very important. We need an intermediate software. Keep in your mind, guys. Uh, for any 3D printer, uh, to work with any 3D printer, we need intermediate software that is slicer. Entire 3D model, we are going to slice into layers. That I will call it as a layer thickness. Okay. Into layers. That layer thickness we can maintain. If you want very good quality of product, so I will be maintaining very uh, minimal layer thickness. That we can uh, adjust in the machine setup. Okay. Once the, all the parameters in that slicing software is done, then we have to slice the entire model. So what will happen? This slicer, it will generate the G codes and M codes. It will generate the program for the machine language, uh, program for the 3D printer. So if I press build or print, so what will happen? That software, it will keep on sending the instructions to the machine so that the 3d printer machine it will act according to that instructions sent by the uh, slicing software okay once the uh, building process is complete then so we are supposed to take out that uh, we are supposed to remove that completely built in model from the machine so here uh, i can say the number seven see this is a cup right so this is a 3d printed cup so once uh, after removing out from the machine so they do go with the post processing to give beauty to that machine uh, sorry component once they're done with that post processing then that product is ready to use that i can say it is an application so these are the steps involved in any of the additive manufacturing okay so now i'm i'll not take much of your time the state of welcome to the point so how we can use this technology in the medical field and i will explore uh, if you, in between if you have any doubts if you feel any doubts you are open to ask okay it, it is easy for me uh, to uh, resolve your doubts that moment only so particularly i am concentrating on medical application see uh, generally uh, Medical applications, uh, very few materials are best suitable for that. These materials are selected based on these three parameters. What are those parameters? Biotolerant, that is one parameter. Bioinert, that is a second parameter. The last one is bioactive. Right? Bioactive. So these all three parameters are selected only for medical application based on these three parameters okay but all the para all the material or raw material uh, all the uh, materials they will not possess all these three parameters see uh, yeah, that's what i made a bifurcation which material it will possess which property see gold even we can use the gold as a medical implant but we cannot use because the availability of gold as well as the processing charge of the gold and uh, affordability right we cannot afford fine that's what but gold uh, it is taking a top level position if you compare with any other metal right gold it is taking top level position that's why also it is bio tolerant what is this bio tolerant so this bio tolerant uh, it is a nature of material uh, implant the implant which can be used as a support material right which can be used as a support material. That nature of material we'll call it as a biotolerant. Bio inert means which can uh, uh, able to uh, develop or fuse the uh, broken bones. Right? That is bio inert. So in that, see, uh, many in case of many medical applications, so always the doctor they uh, they do say we are going to use the titanium right and titanium alloy and uh, if i come with the ceramics aluminum oxide is also one material is a bio inert because all our teeth and also zirconia 
zirconium oxide so our teeth patch up suppose if you have any problem with the teeth so only these materials are going to use aluminum oxide as well as zirconia so it is being used for the dental application even the titanium okay implants dental implants and these two uh, three materials are suitable for bio inert and bioactive means completely within the body which helps to uh, grow our uh, broken uh, imp uh, sorry bones okay so here few uh, line with the metals and many are there with the ceramics and few polymers so in ancient days uh, uh, manufacturer they started using metals because they can easily play around this metal property right uh, then they because many uh, manufacturing activities they have, uh, they were uh, evolved for only metals and then they started doing with this ceramics okay uh, so ceramics and we, uh, the major drawback of this use of ceramics is uh, we cannot easily process this ceramics because most of the ceramics are brittle in nature that's what we can easily we cannot easily process this that's what there is so much of difficulties or hurdles are there while processing the ceramics but the last i can say it is a polymers now so everyone they are looking towards the polymers there are 36000 types of plastics are available 36000 varieties of plastics some are pure some are composites right some are mixed with a metal some are mixed with a ceramic some are mixed with a plastic right different kind of plastics so all together there are 36000 families of polymers are there right among that hardly few are uh, suitable for medical that's what I am concentrating more on polymers. Why? If I talk about strength wise, these polymers are uh, matching with the property of our bone material property, as well as if I talk about the property of uh, biodynamic activity and in that few polymers are uh, matching with that property. So that's what everyone they are looking towards polymers only but even though each polymers will be having their own disadvantage as well as advantage so by looking into the disadvantage by going into the composites we can overcome the disadvantage and we can come out with a good material for medical implants so if i talk uh, this is a first metal implants okay hip joint so these are the major cases accidental cases major patients will be having such kind of these are major kind of products hip joint so here three different materials they are used chromium this is a chromium cobalt and is covered with the polymer and outside black one what you can see that is uh, metal so this will call it as metal on uh, sorry polymer on metal i can say it is a polymer on metal so this is a portion where they are going to fix this hip joint fine so uh, because uh, here metal being used the weight of this metal uh, this anyhow it is a bioactive in the in the sense it is a bio inert even though the weight one side if you put a more uh, weight so that there will be imbalance in the body right patients anyhow uh, he is get relief but it is not a permanent implant it is just a temporary implant Suppose if any sports person in the age of 30 or 35, suppose if he facing such kind of issues uh, in the age 30, they can implant this kind of uh, uh, products. And after uh, hardly, they will they'll not leave it for a longer period. Every five years or 10 years, they're supposed to replace this kind of products. Sorry, this kind of implants. Right. If again, while fixing also, they do, uh, they, they should undergo the major surgery. And while removing also, they have to undergo the major surgery, right? The replacement uh, for metal. So slowly, uh, see the initial very first kind of, this is the first kind of metal. So this, look at the surface. It is very smooth. So what will, uh, what happened? Uh, the, what are the cells in that bone? It, it didn't attach with this. Because what are the implant we are going to put inside the body? Uh, the water cells and skin uh, cells 
has to attach fuse or attach with this component right but it was not happening with this material uh, surface so it is very glossy finish right so this major portion is inserting within this bone so here there were no it is not attaching it is become a loose if it is loose again while walking while doing any work uh, it will create uh, issues or problem with, to the patient so then what they did they made a rough surface right so why they made it rough surface only this portion is inserted within the bone so that uh, this becoming rough all the cell blood cell particles are going to adhere or attach fuse on this surface so that it helps to grow the cells so that there will be no any movement there will be no any movement that's what here also wherever uh, the the water the portion it is um, uh, attaching with the bone human bone so there they made it rough surface so the right one gold uh, this is the uh, chromium cobalt material okay and uh, this portion also they made it rough and this portion also they made it rough the problem is to make this kind of surface through conventional manufacturing is very difficult right they faced so much of hurdle and issues and problems to make such kind of surfaces generally we need uh, what are the implant you take initially soft finish uh, soft surface finish component they used to impl uh, they uh, they used to use as a implant but after knowing uh, after uh, knowing their issues they started making such kind that's what early in earlier days uh, the implant cost it, it was very high okay then they thought of to use this additive manufacturing technology so it is very easy uh, to make such kind of uh, surface finish on the any of the implant material or any of the implant component through additive manufacturing that's what the people they started using the 3d printing technology or additive manufacturing technology uh, to make this kind of implant this one advantage i'm uh, focusing towards additive manufacturing so this is the major because elders usually they do face uh, they are facing this kind of knee pain right uh, usually uh, we have one uh, kind of uh, solution between two bones right suppose after some use usually the sports person and uh, age people they do face such kind of so so in between there are two impl three implants are there the top as well as bottom okay it is attached to the bottom one uh, tibial uh, component and femoral the top one femoral component so in between these two are metal one the middle one that is polyethylene that is polymer material right it will avoid the friction between these two that is a purpose to add so usually the normal uh, uh, human being uh, knee also it, there will be such kind of material will be there okay after some use in the sense after some years uh, this material it will go it will worn out that's what if we started worn out what will happen these two material will come in close attached with each other uh, come in contact with each other friction is going to generate because of friction will feel pain so what doctors they do they'll put some intermediate material like this which is made with the other nature not a same metal if it is same metal then again there will be a friction then they started using polymers this is the first application of polymers in the medical implant that is in the case knee joint so usually uh, many of you people you heard uh, some drivers in many accidental cases some drivers they used to have a backbone a rod fixed in the backbone right because they do undergo the major problem in the backbone continue they used to travel uh, for a longer period 24 hours sometimes continuously 48 hours but they'll be having some uh, uh, issues with the backbone so to give support to such kind of patients they do give, they, they do use the rods right in an earlier days i'm not talking about the new recent one in earlier days they used to uh, they used to use such kind of rods again uh, that also made with the metal what kind of metal so only stainless steel 
that is 6316 uh, l that is a grade only it is suitable for as a implant and chromium uh, cobalt chromium alloys as well as the titanium alloys okay because uh, these material possessing a good corrosion resistance that is one major important because this material should not corrode within our body and will possessing higher mechanical strength okay and cytocompatibility in the sense it will helps to grow the cells in that damaged part at damaged portion that property will called sorry cytocompatibility okay the um, metal material they possessing this property even though it got some disadvantage what kind of disadvantage if you use stainless steel earlier case they used to use stainless steel as not as a permanent implant temporary implant so every frequently they used to change that right why because in stainless steel a nickel which is present in that alloy that uh, reacting uh, it is undergoing the chemical reaction and it is uh, delivering some harmful metal ions within the body harmful metals ions in the body and that create the irritation and allergy to the human body and also see this bone formation so here the bone distortion is also happening the old one the bone distortion is also happening this is the major issues with the metal suppose if you are using uh, titanium alloys and uh, deliberately it will uh, uh, this uh, it releases uh, debris particles by abrasion because major titanium components or implants being used in the dental application right uh, usually if you are using dental application means long term no, long term means mm -hmm. minimum of 5 years right in that case uh, during chewing uh, so there will be uh, friction is going to happen the abrasive action is going to happen because of that it is also able to release or uh, release some kind of uh, particles uh so that causes uh, some undesirable tissue responses okay so because of that what will happen uh, the what are the implants we are using it will start loosening then if start loosening then it will create the issues or it will irritate to the body and major property that is over mechanical property what are the bone we have natural bone so the elastic modulus should have a range of 100 gigapascal to 110 gigapascal that much of uh, property of mechanical properties enough right but because uh, but these metals they are possessing higher more than 100 gigapascal that causes stress shielding and bone disruption so in the right side i am showing you that is a stress shielding okay that is a stress shielding because of higher modulus of elasticity and so after that after knowing this kind of issues people what they start uh, they started doing instead of making a complete entire rod they starting uh, they started using as a uh, bone uh, so uh, i will show you the Im a clear image uh, of that in the next slide okay they they start they change their structure okay uh, and uh, they they little improvised uh, they improvised some property of metal and still it is in practice okay so i said you know uh, this is uh, uh, because of this entire model as a single plant they started using the graft okay patchwork so this is the example see so this is a bone graft this is bio tolerant property this is a, our bone is a ceramic nature and what are the implant we are using it is a metal right so here we are using the screws so what are the material we are using these are all chromium cobalt material right and some alloys here as a bone graft to act act as a patchwork okay they started using in such way okay to avoid the loosening of the implant and uh, uh, to avoid the irritation and allergy okay especially this uh, sports person they will be having such kind of issues 
they started using metal bone crafts. When it come for dental application, in ancient days, they used to use gold for uh, teeth or dental application. See, these are the few uh, images I got. See how uh, they used to arrange the teeth. Okay, so these are the additional teeth, right? They used to fix and is a gold uh, covered. And there is till that, and this is a recent one. So in single teeth also we can replace. So titanium alloys we are using as a screw and fixing as well as the teeth, okay, artificial teeth we are fixing with the help of this screw. But thing is that some uh, patients will be having why uh, this titanium type of uh, implants is not suitable for all because of this issue because uh, this metal implants in dental application uh, because uh, has some drawbacks first drawback what is that failing to keep the procedure area clean usually many people they do not brush neatly right frequently they will not do brushing even after implanting also they because they it will not reach to that particular because there will be some pain for them initially and they will not uh, brush properly they will not maintain the cleanliness in that particular area because of that some issues are going to and also the second case that is a lack of bone density right at this portion lack of bone density that is one property and one issues and uh, while fixing there will be some micro movement not I am saying major movement micro movement will be there that it will keep on uh, irritating to the patient that is a major drawback and one more important thing because some patients if they are uh, addicted with the smoke smoking alcoholism diabetes and suppose the previous condition if they are having facing with the cancer for them metal implants are very uh, not advisable okay and even after implanting also some people they will neglect and they will start doing smoking and that particles it will adhere on this and it will create the issues the major important thing is there is a stress is going to happen or is going to form or is going to form during the chewing right uh, if it is micro movement if it is there obviously because of stress uh, continuous uh, continuous rubbing action obviously it will create the issues that's what they they're planning to remove entire metal with the polymers as well as ceramics so here we saw the application of metal implants as well as the drawback of that so what is what are the alternative metals uh, alternative material we can use it for material uh, for medical uh, medical application see these are the recent advantage uh, recent models developed through laser sintering machine right uh, such kind of uh, <clears throat> it is very difficult see this skull suppose any person uh, if met with an accident some portion part of that skull is got damaged we can rebring that structure okay but there also the this <coughs> look at the surface it is not smooth right because it is a rough surface why because uh, we have to create the facility to grow that cells then only it is going to fuse with the body. Similarly, what are the implants they are using? All these implants they are providing porous structure. So where the cells can grow at faster rate. So this is the best example. I can say metal. Okay, Con not conventionally. These are all 3D printed through metal 3D printed components. Okay, then by looking into that drawbacks of metal implants, so people they started uh, looking towards the ceramic. Ceramic are the best implant material. So we have aluminum oxide and zirconium oxide. Presently, these two are being used uh, dental application and calcium phosphate ceramics, including the major one is hydroxyapatite HA and tricalcium phosphate TCP. So these are the four major uh, material being used as a ceramic material being used as a um, implants 
we can call it as a bioceramics. Okay, among this, HAP is the best biocompatible and I can say it is a bioactive because it will form a very close bond with the bone tissue. Right? I can say it is a, a bioactive. I can also say it is a bioinert in the sense it will mix with human bone so that it will help to grow the cells but not metal. Okay? And uh, being a ceramic, it is best corrosion resistance also. I can say it is a bioactivity and biocompatible, non toxicity. These are the major properties required for the material which is being used for uh, metal, uh, sorry, implants. Okay. And uh, this ceramic material, they possess very, uh, very uh, resistance to compression, lower resistance to compression. And most of these ceramics being used for the orthopedic implants, I said you right, aluminum oxide as well as calcium phosphate. <coughs> Nowadays, calcium phosphate, they are using it as a coating, out, uh, outer surface coating. It is enhancing its biocompatibility nature and the reactivity nature with the human cells. By looking into this advantage, but it also poses some disadvantage because of its brittleness. This material will be uh, poses higher brittleness, and it is very complex processing nature. It is not so easy to process these bioceramics. So it is an open statement for everyone. If you find any best method to process these ceramics, you can take this as an example or uh, as a Issue, uh, problem so you can work on this and uh, because of unacceptable wear after some years of clinical use so the wear rate not immediate so if you put into use for some after some years so the wear will be there so that's what they as a pure ceramic they are not using for the implant there will be some composites what are those composites then I will come to the polymers Right? So in that polymers, the polymers are best suitable to replace metal as well as ceramic implants. Among polyethylene, polyurethane and uh, uh, polymethyl methacrylate and polyether ether ketone. So these are the five best materials are uh, suitable for as uh, for bio, uh, medical implants. So I said polyethylene at a knee joint in uh, the intermediate media, uh, the part they are going to use as a for polyethylene. Okay, because this is non-biodegradable. Now, what is that non-biodegradable? It will not degrade. When you implant in the body, it will not degrade. That is one nature, right? So it will not degrade. That's what it will be long-term use. Okay, and one more in the family of polyethylene, there is a high density polyethylene is also there uh, that can be used for the soft tissue and it also helps to the vascular uh, in growth and it promotes the growth of the cells. Okay, uh, that pro properties are there. And most of the cases, uh, this kind of polyethylene lower jaw, right? And face, upper jaw and lower jaw, the, suppose if a person met with an accident, uh, lower jaw, entire portion can be replaced with polyethylene material implant okay and in some cases i said you right to right side picture what you can see such kind of patch up work if you want so poly uh, this material is the best suitable for that because it is easy to process and is also non biodegradable it will not degrade after the implant and also it is a biologically in inert it will not create any harm to the body okay we can use as a patchwork purpose and also we any different portions any different size we can use it but for uh, these two material uh, after application have some drawbacks after applying as the implantation after the implantation uh, these implants will get infected that is a major drawback and uh, inadequate healing is going to occur that is second and some part of implants it will come out through the skin that is a major drawback for this polymer material then they started working on that see this is a new one that is polymethyl methacrylate 
okay this is liquid based material so if uh, it is very easy to process suppose if any doctor if you want to develop any of the component before surgery also they can suppose if the patient if it is there on a bed uh, if it is under surgery so one or two uh, two hours before also they can manufacture uh, this kind of product with this material and they can Im do implant that kind of feasibility but what purpose they are going to use only for patch up work right uh, what kind of patch up suppose if it is any gaps it is formed between cracks within the bones and uh, implants so that kind of uh, patch work they can do with this kind of material but not as a implant material okay that now i will talk about a very important and uh, which is boom in the market polyether ether ketone peak is a biodegradable right not completely it is a bio inact uh, bioactive and as well as bio inert and this mechanical property of this peak material is matching with the mechanical property of our bone material it is overcoming the issues of with the issues of metal as well as issues of ceramic material so so much of release, uh, work research work is happening on this peak material right and also very important thing is it light in weight that is the uh, beauty of this material strong as well as light in weight and major thing is that drawback is the movement when you open immediately we have to use this material to ma manufacture the component we cannot keep it open okay it is going to lose the property fine if you have a well negative environment so we can save the property of this poly the uh, peak material all the researchers are facing towards or they started working towards the polyether but i cannot say it is 100% suitable for as a implant but even though it is having some drawbacks but that can be recoverable by using by going with the composites what kind of uh, uh, issues it is facing it poor bioactivity because it it is not able to bind uh, the different cells of human cells right that bonding nature bonding capability is very less not too less but it is not acceptable so what because of this uh, so antimicrobial active property B bad bacteria is going to form on that so that will create the issues okay so these are all the uh, manageable issues so we can manage how we managed by incorporating by going with biopolymer combining with bioceramic in that we mixed this is our present research is happening okay uh, peak we mixed with hydroxyapatite peak is a biopolymer hydroxyapatite is a bioceramic so we mix these two together uh, we mix with these uh, two material and we uh, tried uh, to overcome the individual shortcomings right to uh, we start uh, we tried to avoid their individual shortcomings okay even though after developing this novel material we faced few problems uh, also uh, because it possesses greater elastic modulus right and poor fraction resistance and f implant failures and antibacterial activity so we felt we need some intermediate material right there are so many different materials are there you can mix with that and to overcome these issues okay we are working on that that's what i want i don't want to highlight that because it is a confidential one uh, we are working on that and uh, we are going to uh, attain and we are going to overcome these issues very shortly. Okay. Why I am highlighting 3D printing means 3D printing technology can able to develop rough surface finish component. So what are the implants we are using? It needs rough surface. That's what we are promoting additive manufacturing technology for the medical implants. Okay, uh, suppose many of you people uh, not aware about what are the different tests. Suppose if you are interested, keen, interested to develop any of the component for biomedical applications, what are the different properties, doable properties uh, we, and methods we need to go 
So here also I have highlighted. It is in vitro analysis. It is outside the body, right? These are the must and should require these properties. What are the implants? New material you are going to develop. So it has to clear all these tests. And you are supposed to follow the standard procedure because you cannot play with the life of other people. That's what there is a standard procedure out there. So anywhere, uh, anywhere it, you know, it, the, this test will not be done. So very uh, some sophisticated and certified labs are there. Only we have to get it done in particular labs. And also we are supposed to follow. Is that clear? Guys, with this, I'm going to uh, wind up this session. So I hope uh, I covered some portions of uh, IT manufacturing application in medical field and their issues and their advantages. If you have any doubts, Is there any doubts? If you have any doubts, is how expensive will it be to produce 3D printed prosthetic? So it, uh, the, how expensive will it be to produce 3D printed component uh, prosthetic? So right now, the, we don't have any uh, particular manufacturer, right? Uh, so we cannot predict uh, particular cost of that it is because it is a patient uniqueness right uh, so I am not aware about this kind of commercialization of this one because uh, many a time uh, this is a new technology because the raw material for conventional manufacturing we have a see, raw material is available very lesser cost we can easily process but the processing technique is very uh, easy for them. But here, LD manufacturing is a new technology and the machine cost itself is too high. This is the initial stage of that metal component. If it is polymer cased, so obviously it is in under budget. It is affordable cost. Okay, uh, sir, is there any material which have character, characteristics of human skin? No, we cannot because we have a 3D technology. We are uh, developing skins through the human cells. Right? We are developing skins through 3D printing technology by using our own cells, body cells. There is no any particular material uh, like uh, metal or polymer as well as ceramic. Right? Blood cells we are going to use and we are going to arrange and we are going to build through 3D printing, way of 3D printing technology. Already it is in practice. The people, they started developing skins. And uh, one researcher, he already he developed a uh, kidney also. He tried and it worked for eight months. Okay, still the research is happening. Fine. Uh, Good afternoon to one and all gathered on this wonderful session. I take this opportunity to thank our respected chief guest of the session, Dr. Sagar, for his august presence and sharing his valuable and informative things in additive manufacturing on, the, on his very busy schedule. Thank you, sir. I thank extend you, my gratitude to our management, respected principal, Dr. S. Ramachandran, and our beloved HOD, Dr. Mr. Danish, for continuously supporting us to conduct this workshop. I would like to express my sincere thanks to Dr. Sevel for organizing this workshop. I also thank Mr. Ananda Raman for giving technical support for conducting this event. Finally, I want to express my heartly thanks to all the participants and faculties of mechanical department for their enthusiastic support for making this event a successful one. Once again, I thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.